Uh, thanks for joining us. We're going to take you through a particular integration and partnership between Quasi and Unified FX uh, with a particular example um, of uh, how that can benefit a customer in their journey with their interaction in your organization. Obviously, it depends on your vertical and requirement, but I'm sure generally you'll find this uh, of interest. So in terms of the running order for today, it's usual kind of thing. So a little bit on house rules and then uh, just a little bit refresher about Unified FX. Um, then I'll hand it over. Uh, we've got Madison uh, from Quasi with us today, who's going to take us uh, through a little bit about her company, what they do and the solution uh, that they put together for us. <clears throat> and then uh, we'll give you a little uh, demonstration of it in action. Uh, I need to tell you a little bit about how to see that video kind of correctly, uh, but we'll get to that during the session. Um, and then I'll cover a little bit about uh, how it works from our side in terms of the kind of DevOps cloud enablement of what I kind of class nowadays is legacy unified communications, um, how it's available via open interface, and then a little bit to wrap up in terms of events and Q&A. Um, so for today, if you get any questions generally as well, but uh, if you get any problems with the session, uh, audio or you miss things or you need to shoot out, uh, just email sales at unifiedfx.com and we can get that recording to you. Um, we'll probably wait to the end before we answer questions, you know, might answer some on the way, but generally we'll get some time at the end to make sure we do that. Uh, if you do submit any questions, please use the Q&A panel and submit it to all panellists so we can all see that. Um, updated the screen from last time we used it, so it's got the modern kind of graphics that uh, WebEx is using. And a little note here that I've added is uh, the, the video itself, for simplicity, we've just got a little recording and we're going to share that via WebEx uh, to get the kind of best visibility and view of that video once a uh, video demo when we play it. Um, on the kind of media bar that you'll see in WebEx, there's uh, a little expand uh, view button, this little icon here I've highlighted with a red box. Uh, you'll need to click that. So I'll maybe wait a little bit before I start the video so you can expand it, uh, so you can see it fully in your WebEx display. Uh, but we'll, we'll repeat that when we get to that uh, particular section. OK, I'll maybe keep this quite brief. Uh, Unified FX, our three main products are PhoneView, uh, used for endpoint management of literally millions of phones. Uh, Walbert FX, which is for uh, Cisco UCCX contact centers at the moment. Um, looking to expand that maybe next year. But ultimately, it's just an incredibly simple uh, wallboard. You install it yourself. And uh, by design, it's really fast in terms of real-time updates, the fastest that we're aware of. Uh, we also have a migration FX solution which uh, we built on request of Cisco, which makes it crazy easy to swap all phones from you. And a few other scenarios like RMAs, things like that. We've actually got some enhancements we've been adding to that uh, recently, which uh, we can make available, or we're planning to make available at least the beta level on uh, January. Uh, we've got a little webinar um, just as a refresher of migration FX in January, and uh, we'll hopefully show or discuss some of that new functionality. Uh, for anybody that's interested in that area, it's to do with extensibility. Uh, we're adding in the ability to also convert the extensibility device profile from one model type to another, which is just one of these little challenges that some people have um, that would have to do. It just isn't really a native way of doing it. So just uh, for anyone that's interested, you can join us on that event. I'll tell you details at the end. Uh, in terms of uh, Unified FX and some of our customers, um, been kicking around for a few years now. Uh, so quite a lot of people, um, small and large, are using our software, which is great. But what I always like to make reference to, just as a reminder, is that Cisco themselves use our software in several places. In fact, the most recent thing that they've kind of lined up with is was um, the Cisco CCIE collaboration exam. Uh, that is now using PhoneView as part of the actual exam itself. So uh, they don't have any physical phones anymore when you uh, set that session. Uh, they use our software to access it remotely. Uh, we've actually got even more stuff around into that feature set that hopefully they'll take advantage of uh, in some of the next blueprints as well. So it's uh, great to be have that close relationship. So that's it for me. Uh, so what I'll just do is pass the ball over to Madison. Make sure she's unmuted. <laughs> and then, Madison, if you don't mind uh, telling everybody about uh, Quasi, uh, it'd be great. Yeah. 
Thanks so much, Stephen, uh, and thank you everyone for, for joining today. Uh, my name is Madison Cavanaugh, and I am in product solutions at Quasi. Uh, so who is Quasi? We are a uh, solutions plus partner of Cisco, as well as a partner of Unified FX, and we really enjoyed working with this team on the integration that we're going to showcase today um, and working on those various solutions. Um, so Quasi is uh, focused on real-time communication. We have a data listening platform that allows us to take in data from multiple different sources. So think of anything from mobile communication, text messaging, uh, push notifications in mobile apps, um, email, social, and even Wi-Fi listening. So understanding physical location of uh, an individual as they're interacting with a brand or with your company. And we can use that to understand who the individual is, where the individual is, and send real-time communication back to that individual customer, guest, uh, whatever you'd call them, as well as internally to any employees. And these are all completely personalized conversations, as you'll see through our um, enterprise rules engine that we'll run through briefly. And now, thanks to uh, the great team at Unified FX, we're able to push these types of notifications, this personalized content, down to the Cisco desktop phone. This is just a, a quick view of some of our customers. So we work with customers all over the world on so many different types of use cases. Uh, Domino's, for example, we're uh, handling their easy order where you can text the pizza emoji and place your favorite order. Um, you know, that's just one of the, the more fun ones. We do a lot of fun location pieces with Krispy Kreme. Again, that's globally. And Velux has a great loyalty program that we've been working on uh, with them, delivering personalized rewards and communication to their installer base. Uh, so before we get into uh, some of the integration pieces with Unified FX, I did want to touch on a few of the key features of Quasi. So as I said, we are federating data across multiple different points and centralizing that into a single customer record. So traditionally, different channels and different data points have been siloed. Um, but what Quasi does is help bring all of the data together and give you that one 360-degree view of who your customer is, who your guest is, who your consumer is. Uh, through that, we're building a member profile using dynamic attributes that are updating um, anytime the customer is interacting with the brand. So any messages that they receive, purchases that they make, phone calls that they make, visits that they make, we're collating that again into that single member view. And then we use our intelligent rules engine to help manage that personalized communication with the customer and also about the customer to any internal employees. Uh, with our campaigns, we're able to, again, build out that custom communication uh, through the rules engine and then leverage our APIs to integrate into any other existing systems, so any existing CRMs, or if you already have an email service provider that you'd like to keep using, or if you'd like to integrate into your phone system, as we've done with Unified FX, um, our APIs that are um, very strongly built into our, our UI are able to make those types of calls so that you can easily share information in real time to all of your systems. And then lastly, we have our omni-channel communication uh, platform. So with the omni-channel communication, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we are able to send out notifications across all different channels, whether it's SMS, uh, push notifications, email, social, Cisco desk phones. Um, so really any type of channel that um, you're looking to communicate with your customers over, we can help with that. So with Unified FX, we are extending that omni-channel capability, as I mentioned, to the Cisco desk phone. Um, so any of the notifications that internally could be going out over um, you know, text, email, WebEx Teams is another one that we integrate with. We're now able, uh, through the help of Unified FX and their software and their team, um, are able to push those types of notifications down directly to the phones. And that can go across um, an individual device, an individual phone, or across a number of different phones within a given network. And again, all of this messaging is personalized, contextualized, and delivered in real time. Uh, just going back a little bit to uh, the quasi side of things and our intelligent rules engine, you can think of it almost as an enterprise if. So if this event comes in, um, for example, somebody 
walks into a store or into a branch and connects to that guest Wi-Fi, and we recognize that device, and let's say we know that this person is a VIP customer. So if all of those things happen, then perform the following actions. And those actions might be sending that personalized communication over one of the channels noted here. So perhaps welcoming that customer over SMS or perhaps push if they have the app installed and sending a notification down to uh, the store manager, whether that's over WebEx Teams or the Cisco desk phone as um, the integration that we're talking about today. And one of the things that I really do want to highlight as part of this is that it's not necessarily a development task. All of these rules can easily be managed through Quasi's user interface, uh, which I do have some screenshots of to share with you all today. Um, but it can easily be managed through the interface without necessarily needing to know how to program or program. Now, of course, there would obviously be a little bit of development going on in the back to make sure that we are capturing those events. But once we have that list of events, it's very simple to set up these different rules and you know, change them over time, change the content, change the reason for the rules. Um, and you'll see a little bit of that as we keep going. So the APIs that I've mentioned before are REST APIs. Um, they're very easy to deploy. They're independent of any language. And our main APIs that our system utilizes are our member APIs, and that's to create, edit, and delete, and update members our event APIs, and that's what's the real-time listening engine that's capturing those events, like when somebody opts in for messaging, when somebody walks in and connects to Wi-Fi, when somebody makes a purchase. That's the event listening, the data listening component. And then, of course, the messaging APIs, sending out those outbound broadcasts and notifications both to the customer and to the employee. All of our API documentation is easily accessible through our user interface which again is um, where, the, where the rules can be configured and edited and set up. Um, and we can deliver across a number of different verticals. So just thinking back to the, the slide that I showed earlier with our customers, they cross a number of different verticals. So whether it's retail, financial services, hospitality, QSR, travel, um, healthcare, you know, we have customers that span all of those different verticals. So it's really not an isolated solution. It's something that, you know, tweaking the use case would help it work for really any vertical. And um, also, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, right, if you have an existing CRM, existing email provider, existing loyalty program, we can, of course, you know, act as those um, different pieces, but we are more than happy to integrate with any legacy or existing pieces. Um, in order to help contextualize communications, right? So you don't necessarily have to rip and replace in order to, to work with us and with our technology. Um, so it's, people find that to be a very um, kind of easy um, uh, way to get into some of the work that we're doing, right? You can you know, start by just simply implementing this on top of what you already have that's already working for you to enhance those capabilities. And now we'll get into the actual integration uh, and the work that we have done with the Unified FX team. So, so on the screen here, what you're seeing is the workflow for that integration, both the business communication to so the internal communication, as well as that customer or consumer communication. So in this example, we have our customer who is on their phone. They walk into a physical location and they are connecting to Wi-Fi. And that could be Cisco Meraki. It could be um, legacy Cisco CMX. It could be any of um, any wireless provider, right? We're able to tap into that, understand the device, and, and once that's fed into Quasi's rules engine, we're doing three different things in this example here, right? So if you go down below, we're seeing a, a notification sent directly to that customer. And then we're also seeing two different ways to notify staff, right? So maybe you want to send a general notification out to staff over WebEx team but you want to notify the exact um, manager for this person, right? If, um, the example that we're using today is actually a banking example. So if a customer comes into a bank for an appointment, you want to notify the manager who's having that appointment with him that Tom has walked in. Here's what you need to know about Tom. Here's what he looks like in case you haven't met him before, or right, in case this is a new relationship that you're fostering. All of that, thanks to Unified FX, is information that we are able to pass down to the Cisco desk phone 
patients in real time. So that's a little bit of the, uh, the pretty workflow, and this is what it looks like on the back end. So again, I mentioned that we do have our intelligent rules engine, and these are a couple of screenshots uh, from that area. So we have uh, the trigger configuration as the inbound, right? So we're looking for that Cisco wireless entry, and we're also looking directly at some of the attributes of the individual phone that we've recognized. And in this case, it is the member level being marked as a VIP. And when we see that, there are a number of things we can do, right? I already mentioned that we can send a text, send an email, send a push notification, all of which we are doing, but specifically wanted to highlight how simple it is uh, with the integration that we've done with Unified FX. We're able to call their uh, API, call their system, and send over um, personalized information about the individual, right? Send person last name, sending over their appointment time, send manager. And all of this is feeding directly down to that desktop phone with the um, with not only that personalized information, but also the personalized image. And lastly, and you'll see a little bit of this in the, the uh, demo video that Stephen will play, but this is the customer journey demo, right? So we're understanding all of these different attributes about Tom, who is our example VIP customer. So we understand that Tom has been browsing uh, mortgages through the app and on his uh, mobile device. And we also understand as he makes that inbound call in that, you know, this is Tom that's calling in. What information can we display to the person that answers that phone call? Um, and we can also see once he makes that appointment, receives that confirmation. And then here's the, the main journey that we've been highlighting all along, right? So he walks in, we're recognizing that Wi-Fi connection. We're welcoming him. We're connecting to other components within Cisco, uh, in this case, Cisco Vision, right? That uh, digital display showing him content that's relevant to why he's here today. And then um, also sending that alert out to uh, Unified FX and ultimately to the uh, Cisco desktop phone. Um, so with that, uh, Stephen, if you wouldn't mind playing the, the video so that everyone can get a closer look at it. Think that no problem. Us. Yep. Perfect. Thanks for that, Alison. Let me just yeah, uh, figure out how to do that. Again. Oh, you've passed it over. Thanks very much. Uh, right. So, just as a point to note, I'm going to flip over to the kind of video side of it. And if you notice that little kind of video panel with the uh, expand view button highlighted, uh, that's what you're going to see in a little second. So, let me upload the video file to share that. Quasi and Unified FX come together to enhance the Cisco desk phone. Quasi's platform captures every data point in the customer journey. Looking at Tom Gallagher, we can see that he was recently browsing mortgages in his banking app. When he calls his local branch to make an appointment, Quasi passes Tom's data to Unified FX who displays it on the Cisco handset, providing context to the agent who answers the call. Back in Tom's journey, we can see that he makes an appointment while on the phone and receives a mobile confirmation for that appointment. Later on, when Tom walks into the branch, his phone automatically reconnects to Cisco CMX Wireless. Quasi uses this event to pass more information to Unified FX, who displays a VIP alert on the bank manager's phone, alerting him of Tom's arrival. So as you can see in the demonstration, it was really just highlighting a couple of interactions uh, in that customer's journey down to the point where uh, they called into the branch and they can uh, get contextual information for uh, on the Cisco phone as they answer it, as well as for the manager, for example, getting a visual notification of what the person looks like so they can work with them. So let's um, kind of describe the Unified FX side of the integration uh, and why we did it and the way that we've done it. So if you think about for anybody, uh, and I may not be many people, but for anybody who has developed against Cisco's um, uh, communication manager platform or even dabbled in that space, 
uh, it's not very simple. Uh, there's lots of different integrations, lots of different ways to integrate, lots of different technologies. So if you want to create, um, you know, a bespoke application or something, you know, on top of that, it's generally specialised developers. There's not many of them, um, and they're generally quite expensive for that reason. So there's probably not a lot of integrations and bespoke applications. You know, the main that we live in is uh, in Cisco's ecosystem is relatively limited. You know, there's a number of companies that do the same kind of thing, and there's not probably too many that do a lot of bespoke integrations because it's generally quite hard to do. Um, so we kind of treat that as the, the way things um, are at the moment. And there's an opportunity to change and improve that. <clears throat> so the way we like to move things forward is in the modern uh, approach to things. Uh, you've got you know, DevOps or cloud-based uh, approaches. So the ability to automate uh, in terms of DevOps and the ability to centralize and publish nice and easily. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be in the cloud, but a cloud-type approach. Um, from that perspective. And when you're dealing with those types of web-based systems, uh, there's literally you know, millions of developers that have skills in that respect. You know, we're talking about REST APIs, that's the, the language of a, a web developer that we all know and understand. So we're talking about you know, trying to work in a world where there's modern APIs, that have consistent interfaces, consistent technology and integrations, and, you know, open standards base, simple to integrate and use. They're all obviously web oriented in terms of the protocols. Um, so it just cuts down the complexity and costs significantly when you deal with things in, in that type of world. And the way that we bridge those two together, um, and I've maybe talked about this on the odd little webinar session I've done over the last little while, um, but this is just a kind of real world example of it in action. Um, is our Automation FX platform. And that's technically what we built our migration FX software on, and subsequently we've added our phone FX and notification FX uh, features onto. And as you may be able to tell, it's where everything is going on in the future is on this platform. And that's possible because of how we built that base layer. Because it's not just about us being able to add features and build things that uh, work against uh, Cisco telephony. It's about other systems being able to take advantage of the kind of integration effort that we've already put into this. And the way that works is we effectively translate all of the complex APIs into that modern, simple, restful uh, API that everything you know, cloud orientated and DevOps orientated uses nowadays. So we take away all the pain and hassle uh, of that integration which means if you do have even an in-house bespoke application, that can be cheaper because um, you're using simpler techniques. You don't have to use these specialized developers anymore. You can use these general web developers to enhance or integrate. Um, so your normal applications that you might have had before can be simplified. And likewise, that now means that other systems, uh, in particular cloud-based systems, uh, as obviously we're demonstrating with Crazy here, uh, can also be brought into the fold and interact with those devices and uh, users uh, from that perspective. So that's really our high level picture of what we're trying to achieve here. Um, when you have a system such as Automation FX to provide that simple integration, it does actually open up quite a lot of different scenarios for how it can be used. So what the integration that Quasi is doing is highlighting to those. So in particular, a CTI screen pop. So that's those that general use case where a call comes into a phone, some kind of database dip, some kind of lookup happens, uh, find that person's number and associate with some data and records and then present something um, contextual to the person answering the phone. It's a pretty powerful and useful feature and just takes things beyond the simple mobile number that might appear on the phone screen. And you don't have to pop this information on the actual Cisco phone either. Uh, it could be a related application that they're viewing as well. So it's just a general principle of that screen pop is uh, one use case. The other one that uh, is being leveraged from a quasi integration perspective is the messaging side. So as part of our notification FX functionality, so that's that kind of mass messaging, we designed it from day one to be fully open and integratable. And that means that the ability to send messages individually or on mass is just 
opened up again for any external system to take advantage of. Uh, there's other scenarios too because of the integrations that we have that allow you to automate or uh, dynamically set provisioning. So, you know, that's a, a simpler thing to do now than it would have been before. Um, so from a phone view perspective, um, the actual mechanics of phone view are built into automation FX. So that therefore allows you to automate or script, you know, pretty much about 80% of what phone view can do. Even, you know, something like deleting ITL files, which is always a common thing. If you really wanted to or needed to, for whatever reason, you could automate that or you could expose it. Uh, as a help desk tool or something in some other help desk platform or system. If it was a common task or something you wanted to repeat. Um, automated testing, that's something that we're actually focusing on at the moment as a particular use case. Um, in PhoneView version 7, uh, if anybody didn't catch that, and I'll, in fact, I might just do that right now. I've got a slide that's going to cover this in a minute or two, but just so people have got it ahead of time, I'm just going to paste this in. So if you look at the chat window, um, this is some events that we've ran already and some that we've um, got in the future. So you get a reference to the videos if you want to go back and watch those webinar sessions or if you want to uh, register and join for the future ones. If you haven't already, <clears throat> you can follow that information. Um, but the automated testing side of it, what we've done to progress further down that space is not just make the features of what phone you can do as in making phone calls, answering calls, uh, monitoring things like that via an API, which is part of what the automation FX solution does provide. So you can script and automate that. Uh, but with version seven, we've also embedded actual media uh, emulation or uh, virtualization. So you can actually take multiple soft phones on a single PC and uh, stand them up as registered endpoints. So you don't actually need physical phones. So you've got soft phone support to start with. You've got virtual endpoints uh, in terms of being able to register multiple devices nice and easily for ad hoc testing, as well as the ability to uh, log in and register and control agent state for UCCX agents too. I don't want to touch on that too heavily, but the point is that core functionality that we've added into PhoneView recently fits very squarely into that automated testing use case. And you'll see more, of, uh, more things developing in that area from us as well. Uh, one little thing I do want to touch on, it's more of a cool technical diagram than, than it is uh, anything else, um, which is that screenshot there, um, is we've also implemented cloud integration as part of the Automation FX platform. Um, and now it's calling outbound you know, to an internet address. That's dead easy. Anybody can do that as long as you can go outbound through our firewall. Um, the tricky part is if you've got an external system rooted via the cloud or hosted there somewhere um, and you want to trigger or event or uh, you know, alert <coughs> and push things uh, down to a Cisco uh, endpoint or CCM system, um, inbound is the tricky part. And that's what CloudFX takes care of. Uh, so we've built a relay system, uh, which is all tied down secure, protects against denial of service, validates requests uh, against what's allowed. It's always got authentication mechanisms. It's actually multi-tenant as well. So we'll root down to the proper instances. And it really just means you've got a nice, clean and simple uh, single entry point, which is all that stuff's taken care of. And it gets it down to your automation FX instance. Now, it's something that really uh, pushed you heavily. It's actually used as part of the uh, quasi integration. Um, but that's something, again, that we'll maybe see a little bit more of in the, the future as we expand some use cases. <coughs> and the way that we expose this is through uh, an open interface. So that allows you to integrate with CCM easily, as I've talked about. A little screenshot there just shows you an interactive REST API. So for any developers, they'll be really happy and it'll be really easy for them to work against. It's just a, a click, um, a sequence of clicks you can put in and type in some data and you can submit those um, requests into the API and test and try it all out. So if you're going to take advantage of that functionality, you can prove it all out uh, nice and simply and uh, means you can work with any development language that's, that's out there. And so just to kind of wrap up really. Uh, I've posted this data into the chat window. So that's the events we've ran previously. Um, recently, we've uh, talked about wallboards as well. We just bumped that up to version four. That gives Cisco compatibility to all of our products now, which is great. Uh, obviously, 
got a couple of sessions in January. We've got more we'll do after that, obviously. We're just kind of running up to Cisco Live in uh, Berlin for now, uh, Berlin, Barcelona this year. Um, after that, we'll post a few more and uh, we'll see what people want to do. Uh, as I said earlier, the Migration FX uh, overview is the 16th of January. Uh, we'll get a little bit of new functionality in there for anybody who uses extensibility and is migrating phones. Uh, I uh, recommend you join that session. You might find it interesting. Uh, and I think that's us. Um, I don't think I see any questions, actually. So uh, I think we'll maybe just uh, wrap it there. Uh, thank everybody for your time. And thanks, Madison, for um, helping us with the session. And uh, hopefully um, see you again on one of the next sessions at some point. If not, we'll maybe see you at Cisco Live sometime. Take care. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.